The Supreme Court in the USA last week voted to overturn a 50-year-old law that protected access to abortions as a constitutional right. What this means is that abortion laws will now be knocked down to the individual states, meaning around about half of the USA will now deem them to be illegal. Now, if you don't agree with abortions, that's fine, don't have one. I don't agree with perms. Do I think they should be made illegal? Well, probably, yeah. But ultimately, if you wanna prance around looking like a sex poodle, who's on the prowl for wavy-haired hanky-panky with other like-minded sex poodles, then that is your right as a human being. By the way, Sex Poodle's first album is a masterpiece. But this isn't about perms, or even sperm. It's about choice, and taking that choice away. Because this ruling won't stop abortions, it'll just make them illegal, and that is an important distinction. If you outlaw dentistry, People wouldn't stop getting the teeth fixed. You'd just push them to go to dangerous lengths to get a scale and polish, and everyone would end up looking like Shane McGowan. Because now women who want, or in some cases need an abortion, will be forced to travel interstate, or worse still, seek out other means. Illegal abortions put the patient in huge danger, even though those who support the ban refer to themselves as pro-life. Pro-life? This is not about protecting human life in America. If human life was so important, there'd be universal health care when these babies arrive. If human life was so important, there'd be financial assistance for the millions born into poverty each year. If human life was so important, there'd be equal rights for all, regardless of race, creed, colour or sexuality. Jesus Christ, if human life was so important, there'd be a proper conversation around gun control every time someone waltzes into a school and kills 15 kids with a rifle they bought in a friggin' supermarket. It's not about human life it's about control control over women specifically and statistically women from low-income households and it's control based on a book that was written over 2,000 years ago now again if you want to believe that book that is absolutely fine I've got no problem with that the problem I've got is trying to apply some of the principles in that book to a society that is now 2,000 years removed because nothing stays 100% relevant for 2,000 years. When that book was written, women were deemed second-class citizens. Because let's imagine, just for a second, that this same right to choose was being taken away from men. On the day the vasectomies were deemed illegal, you'd have thousands of men marching on Washington, stockpiling the backed-up baby gravy to make dirty Molotov spunk bombs to throw at the police. Millions of sperm died needlessly! Why not just ban wanking? I'm sure the Bible doesn't look too kindly on that either. And anyway, doesn't life begin at the point of erection? In America, we're now looking at a situation where a man could rape a woman. The woman gets pregnant and wants an abortion. That woman could face more time in prison for making an informed decision about her own body than the rapist who chose his decision over hers. But that's an extreme example. Here's another slightly less dystopian hypothetical. A woman gets pregnant and chooses to have an abortion. But now, in many US states, she will be denied that choice. Remember, all the rights we enjoy today, all the rights we take for granted, all of them were fought for tooth and nail by past generations. And as this reversal shows, there are those who do not want us to have those rights. The Supreme Court judges who voted for this made the case that the American Constitution makes no mention of abortion. But it makes no mention of speed limits either, so you're gonna get rid of them as well. I'm just checking the Constitution and there ain't nothing in it about pissing in the mall, so you go for it, Daphne! Justice Thomas, one of the judges who voted for this overhaul, even made the comment that perhaps this should be extended to outlaw other precedents. Precedents such as same-sex marriage, gay intimacy. Well, let's just pivot on our heels and start goose-stepping back towards the 1950s, shall we? Because here's where it gets very interesting. Three of the judges who voted to overturn this constitutional right were appointed by a former president, a man by the name of Donald J. Trump. So next time you hear someone say, ah, oh, voting doesn't make any difference, they're all as bad as each other, they're not. <laughs> they're not. None of them are perfect. Some of them are terrible, but some of them are even worse. And just because your exact ideal political candidate isn't running, who you agree with on every single issue, doesn't mean you shouldn't exercise your right to have your voice heard. Because if you don't exercise those rights you still have, they'll take those away too. Thanks for watching. More videos here every week. Sending love and respect to everyone out there fighting for women's rights.